Okay, thank you very much for tuning in to Short and Sweet. Big topic for today, and that is, are you too picky in Shaduchim? Now, some people are not going to appreciate what I'm going to say today, but it's okay. I'm not looking to make friends with you. I'm just going to tell you the truth as I best understand it from Taira, from the Chachamim, and from my life experience. So here we go. Are you too picky in Shaduchim? So I would say like this. My experience is, this is very similar to racism. If you ask people you know, are you racist? They'll say, me? No, racist. God forbid everybody's great and everybody's good and everybody's equal. Then ask the follow-up question. Do you know anybody who's racist? They're going to say, yeah, sure, lots of people. Yeah, all the time. Nobody, nobody's racist, but everybody knows somebody else who is. So my friends, I will tell you as follows. When it comes to being picky and shaduchim, ask any person who's single or has been single on the market for a while, are you too picky and shaduchim to say, me, God forbid, no, I'm only looking for the basics, blah, 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 blah. But ask them, do you have single friends who've been dating for a couple of years and are they too picky? Oh my gosh, what about Rachel, what about David? what about Ruva? what about Shimon, what about Leah? Oh, yo, 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 names have been changed to protect the picky. So what is being picky? Picky, uh, I think we could define it as taking arbitrary or nonsensical criteria and eliminating somebody based on them. Taking something that's, that's not essential, not crucial, not important, meaningless, and you eliminate somebody with that. I think that's a tremendous, brilliant definition. But there's one problem with it. The problem is nobody really ever thinks that their criteria by which they eliminate people in terms of not going out with them, or once the data started, nobody ever thinks that they are being too picky. They believe their criteria are, are gifts from God, and therefore they know exactly what they are doing. So over here, I would say this is very similar to sinas chinam, what uh, Chazal tell us, a big problem, what we call baseless hatred, hating a Jew for no reason at all. Ask people, what's, do you, is there any Jewish person you don't like? Yeah. Is it sinas chinam? No. Why? Because sinna means hate. Chinna means for nothing. Yeah, I hate people, but it's not for nothing. So again, like sin is chinam, like baseless hatred, it's a question of definitions. This is why it's very important to have your shidduch team in place, which we've discussed in previous short and sweet series, and also to have substantial big Jewish people you can reach out to so you can find out are the standards you have by which you're eliminating possibilities in terms of meeting people or people in certain life circumstances or maybe people once you've actually met them are those criteria based on something or the machinations of your mind. One thing I found over time is a general trend and that is that both men and women tend to trend pickier the time that the longer the time that they're on the singles market. Longer you're going, it might be counterintuitive. You would say, listen, I just want to get married already. I've been out there for a while. I'm waiting to get drafted by somebody. I will become a little bit less selective. But my experience has been it's gone in the opposite direction. And I have found that men generally tend to get more picky over time when it comes with a woman's looks, with the, with the attractiveness and the appearance of a young lady. I think that the reason men get more picky with time is if you've been dating 5, 10 years and you're frustrated, they say, look, I don't know what exactly to look for anymore, so I'm just going to measure the very thing I can measure, and that's what you look like in the mirror. And I also would say ditto for women. I have found in my experience in trying to help hundreds of young men a year and over the last 15 plus years, I have found that women get more picky over time as well. But for them, it's not an increased pickiness on attractiveness. I have found it is in terms of the financial prowess that can be found in the man's bank account. And I think it's a similar reason why. Listen, I've been out there for a while. I don't even know exactly what I'm looking for anymore. My head is spinning. I got, went out with 96 guys. Hashem should help me. I don't know. But there's one thing I can measure. There's one thing I do know. And that is what is going on in the guy's career and the like. So people become, uh, you know, people become more picky. And you know, what's more measurable than the size of a person's bank account? That is something that you definitely can measure and quantify in an easy way. It is a terrible mistake in Shaduchim to look for a person who is essentially flawless. It is, it is an exercise in futility, and I have found, and it's one that keeps many men on the singles market far too long. If you look in the book of Kaiheles, King Solomon, Shlema Melech, chapter 7, verse 28, says like this, uh, One man in a thousand did I find, but a woman with all these I did not find. So what did King Solomon mean? So I've seen it said that Shlema Melech was saying, 
that you'll never find a lady with what we call all the milas, all the traits, every attribute possible, and men have to take this to heart. A woman with all these, if King Solomon couldn't find her, you're probably not going to as well. Nobody likes to hear what I'm about to say, and people always grit their teeth and nod politely when I say it, but if you want to get married, you are going to have to compromise. The people who get married are the ones who find somebody whose flaws you can accept, and you live with them, and you run with it. The people who don't get married are the ones who always spot a person's flaws or shortcomings or areas that are not perfect and says, I could do better the next time. And can you do better the next time? Maybe, but understand, if you go out with Rachel and she has trait A, B, and C you like, but D, E, and F you don't, we could find you somebody else and we won't have D, E, and F, but there'll be P and Q and R instead. Okay, So the exercise in trying to find the spouse and not being too picky is to accept the fact that we could probably pick holes in you, like I can pick holes in me and other people can as well. And every person who's married is a person who found out there somebody who has flaws, but you can live with them and you can swallow them and you can move forward. And I'll tell you one last thing. The Ger Rebbe, the Beis Yisrael Zatzal, once met a much older chassid of his, a, one of his disciples, who was much older. I mean, like much, much older. And he never got married. And the Rebbe said, no, my, my, my holy Jew, maybe it's time to get married and, uh, you know, move it along. He said, Rebbe, Rebbe, I'm not, uh, I'm not ready yet. So, so he said to him, you know, the Mishnah says in Pirkei Avos that you're supposed to get married, ideally, uh, certainly in ancient times, at the age of 18. And you're, uh, I don't know, maybe double that or more. Maybe it's time to get moving. So he said to him, yes, yeah, Shmona Esra. I know it says that in the Mishnah. It says Shmona Esra, 18, a person should go to the chuppah. He said, but Rebbe, I'm davening along Shmona Esrei. Shmona Esrei is, the, is the, the prayer we do, the silent Amidah, the long prayer. He said, Rebbe, don't worry, I'm doing a long Shmona Esrei, which is a cute answer. But the Beis Yisrael said back to him something very sharp and very quick. And you know what he said? He said, be very, very careful. He said, because if you are busy with a long Shmona Esrei, you're going to be late for Kedusha. Kedusha means holiness. If you're in Shul and you daven Shmona Esrei way too long, you're going to miss the Kedusha prayer. And the same thing happens in Shaduchim. If you say, oh, I'm davening along Shmona Esrei, you're going to make a joke and you're going to be way, way, way too picky. What's going to happen over time? You're going to be late for all the Kedusha that comes, all the holiness that comes with forming a beautiful Jewish household. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you the next time.